Hi, welcome to another video where I talk extensively about the Soviet Union in a video that isn't supposed to be about the Soviet Union. Uh, I'm gonna do this video next because I have so much to say and I need to get it out so I stop talking about it in other videos. Um, this video is about Germany and I haven't even mentioned him yet, I think that's very telling. Alright, so Germany is like kind of a nervous wreck, but he's also generally optimistic and most of the time he's in a good mood. He's big brain because I like playing into stereotypes. That was a joke, by the way. And everyone with glasses is automatically big brain. That was also a joke. Um, as a person who needs glasses, my very existence proves that myth incorrect. His father is the German jackass. And yes, I'm still referring to him as that. I will now also be referring to the Axis powers as the Council of Assholes. I don't know what the other parent is, and I don't really want to think about which country is freaking the German jackass. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's just say that countries can reproduce asexually, you know, for plot convenience. With his father being the German jackass, Austria and Hungary are his uncles. Also, the Weimar Republic is, but he's dead. <laughs> so, yeah. His closest friends are probably the old Eastern Bloc puppet states. Uh, mutual suffering builds friendship in my brain. That's definitely how it works. He's also pretty close to France because she was kind of a motherly figure to West Germany after World War II. And he's been friends with Italy and Japan since he was very small. Again, uh, shared trauma, the real chemistry. He doesn't really have any enemies. Really, that's because he isn't trying to make them, and if he doesn't like someone, he'll keep his mouth shut. He's polite, but some of it is because he's scared of starting a conflict. Uh, now let's start off with his troubling childhood. The German jackass was like a pretty decent father to Germany compared to what was going on with the Soviet Union and his kids. Also in this video I did cut out all the times I accidentally said Soviet Union so you're welcome. Uh, I imagine he genuinely cared about his son and wanted what was best for him but like he had a much different idea of what that was. Germany never knew his grandparents, Austria-Hungary and the German Empire, but his father seemed to hold the two of them in really high regard, and he kind of got the impression that they were, like, flawless people, which they weren't, you know, th th war crimes and stuff. Uh, but the German jackass kind of tried to, like, drill it into his brain that the victors of World War One were pretty shit countries and that they were the enemy. Uh, Germany was kind of too young to understand it, but he also had conflicting reports. Uh, his uncle, the Weimar Republic, was pretty chill. He wasn't the most competent in leading the country, and the economy was a mess under his power, but he had good intentions. Two of them spent a lot of time together, and Germany kind of looked up to Weimar, much to the German jackass's disappointment. Uh, Germany didn't understand what was happening when his own father started to get more and more involved with the government. Like I said, he was too young to understand a lot of what he was saying. He didn't really know how much weight the words carried. He also didn't really understand the Great Depression either. He was kind of a kid and it wasn't really his job to worry about it. Weimar in the Third Reich- well, that's the first time I haven't called him the German jackass. Wow. Uh, Weimar and the Third Reich kind of struggled against each other for power, Reich out of ambition, and Weimar out of fear of what that ambition would lead to. Unfortunately, it would lead to sibling murder. Remember when in America's video I was talking about the American Civil War and said that sibling murder was going to happen a lot? This is one of those examples. Germany probably, like, walked in on the scene after Weimar was killed, and he was probably like, Dad, what the fuck? Like you do. Um, he was very upset, and he had every right to be. It was here that he kind of started to realize what was happening. Uh, he became more distant from his father after that, while Third Reich kind of tried to close that rift. He, he failed because he was doing some very, very bad things that his son did not agree with. My headcanon is basically, like, he was an actual small child living in Germany during the war. They wouldn't understand what was happening at all, and even if they started to, they'd have no power to fix it. I also kind of did this with Japan. It's mostly out of me kind of, like, not wanting to blame the people of a nation for something that nation did before they were even born. It's to, like, separate the characters from their dark history because what happened then does not represent the countries today. Uh, sorry, I went off on a bit of a tangent. Um, but yeah, shortly before the war started, he met Japan and Italy because their parents were the Council of Assholes. 
Uh, at that point, both of them were kind of at the stage where they didn't really understand what was happening, and Germany had to kind of bite his tongue when they talked positively about the war, but the three of them became pretty close nonetheless, especially in later years when they were all more aware of the fact that their parents were assholes. Germany took no part in the war. It was his jackass of a parental figure that did everything. He probably, like, dragged him to a naval battle once or something, and he was just terrified while Reich was like, Look, son, war is entertainment for the whole family. But uh, that's my best dad voice. Uh, (laughs) I can't. Um, But after that, he learned that Germany didn't particularly enjoy the battlefield. Wait, if a battle is on an ocean, is there still a battlefield? Because, like, fields are on land. Towards the end of the war, both of their mental states have been through a meat grinder. (laughs) Reich was losing his mind, and to be fair, he was already kind of insane, uh, while Germany was traumatized by the bombing raids over Berlin every now and then. And then Berlin gets invaded by the Soviets. Germany probably hides somewhere during the whole thing, and when ten minutes go by without the sound of an explosion breaking his eardrums, he probably would, like, creep out and go try to find his father. Uh, and he finds his father, just not alive. Whoops. Germany actually wasn't the first to know in my interpretation of this whole shit show. In my head, canon, the Soviet Union was the one to find him, and he was just kind of standing there in shock. But yeah, then Germany enters and he, like, snaps out of it and is just really mean to him. Because he's pissed off for multiple reasons. Again, I'll talk about that in his video. I really need to get it done so I can stop saying that. Uh, Obviously, Germany is traumatized. Who wouldn't be? And while he was honestly terrified of his own father and hated everything he did, he couldn't help but miss him. Like it or not, he was family, and now that part of his life is gone. He was brought back to the Western Allies to surrender for his father, which he did without hesitation as he didn't want this mess to go on any longer and soon he was split up into East and West. Again, I don't exactly know how this works. Both East and West Germany share, like, the memories prior to them splitting up, but they're each kind of their own person now. Uh, West Germany is treated really well by the Western Allies, but on the other hand, East Germany is treated like absolute dog shit. The Soviet Union hates him, or at least he says he does. There's a lot more to that, but... (laughs) We'll get into that in his stupid freaking video that I need to do soon so I can stop interjecting little things about him into these videos. Uh, Even though the two of them are split up, they can still see each other. That is until the Berlin blockade, but that ends pretty quickly, so I mean... Oh, but Soviet isn't done trying to make everyone's life miserable. In 1961, he decides to build a wall to keep out the Mexicans. Wait a minute. Uh, But yeah, I got a thing to read about that, so let's go. Uh, read aloud, start in three, two, one, gaming. East Germany moved swiftly through the streets of Berlin, a skip in his step as he got closer to the border with the west side of the dark city. There weren't many people up at this hour, but East had accidentally pulled an all-nighter and he couldn't wait to visit West Germany any longer. He was still tired after getting a grand total of zero hours of rust, but something just felt wrong and for some reason his anxiety kept him up. He also could have sworn he heard some weird noises during the night, but it was probably nothing. He shook away the nervous feeling. He'd be able to see his brother soon, and that always cheered him up. He turned around the corner of a building and... What? He stopped in his tracks when he saw the barrier on the horizon between he and his brother's separate territories. He stared in confusion for a few moments before hesitantly approaching the wall. He shrugged it off. He'd be able to get to the other side. The wall couldn't stretch that far. When he got closer to the large stone barrier, he began to feel uneasy. There was barbed wire stretched over the top of the fence. Whoever built this clearly didn't want anybody getting over. He touched the cold, hard stone, flinching at the texture. This was weird. Is this what the wall at the inner border looks like? He questioned mentally, feeling a chill go down his spine. He looked to the side to see how far the wall stretched, but he couldn't see where it ended. Surely an entrance to the other side was around the corner, so he began walking. But he could find no such entrance. It seemed to go on forever. He slowed to a stop and stood there, feeling lost. He was confused. What was this? Why was this here? He knew that a wall had just been built between the east and west, but that was along the border of the actual countries, not the capital city. The realization began to creep over him and he swallowed, anxiety climbing in his chest. 
East looked back up at the wall and studied it. It wasn't that tall. He could easily climb it. He was only worried about the rows of barbed wire at the top of it. He tapped his foot on the ground, thinking. He supposed that it would be worth the risk. It wasn't like barbed wire could kill a country or anything. Anyways, he'd be fine if he was careful, which he always was. Cautiously, he reached up to the top of the wall and gripped the edges of it, lifting up a leg and trying to find a foothold between the haphazardly placed bricks. He managed to hoist himself up, being careful not to touch the wire. He balanced on top, looking across West Berlin. It looked much nicer than his part of the city. Cleaner, even. He stood there, scratching his chin as he tried to think of a way to get over the barbed wire that stood between him and socialization. What are you doing? East nearly jumped out of his skin, tripping and falling over the edge of the wall. He instinctively reached out to grab something to pull himself back up, and he didn't realize his mistake until he felt the spikes of the barbed wire sink into his fingers. He let out a yelp of pain as he hit the ground, taking the section of the wire with him. His hands stung sharply and his ears were ringing as he struggled to breathe. Even through his days, he was able to sense the presence of another country watching him. Not helping him, mind you, just watching. Finally, he recollected himself enough to sit up and painfully wrestle the barbed wire from his hands, the barbs tearing at his skin as he tried to tug them off. It hurt like all hell and his palms and fingers were covered in blood, but he managed to detach himself from the thorn-like spikes. But that was the least of his concerns. He knew what was coming next. He took in a breath and shifted, turning around to see none other than the Soviet Union glaring at him. What is this? he asked weakly. A wall? Soviet replied icily. Have you never seen one before? East ignored his cold sarcasm and stood up, having to balance on his feet alone without the support of his hands since they were wounded. He wished the other country would help him to his feet, but apparently that was too much to expect. What is it for? he asked. What do you think? Even in the dark, he could see that Soviet's eyes were shadowed with anger. He opened his mouth to respond, but nothing came out at first. How far does it go? he asked quietly. Around the entire perimeter of West Berlin. It's impossible to get in, he told him, his voice hard. East's heart sank. All the way around? How would he see his brother? Wasn't the inner German border enough? Why did he have to separate the two sides of the capital city as well? He stared at the ground for a few seconds before looking back up. Why? he asked, his voice becoming softer. Soviet narrowed his eyes. You know why, he growled. He flinched back, the familiar thorn of guilt stabbing him in the stomach. His mind began to float off, and the taller country just watched him as he shrunk in on himself, staring at nothing. Are you done feeling sorry for yourself? So he'd asked after an amount of time that East honestly couldn't measure. You're one to talk, he mumbled, not intending for him to hear it. There it seemed to freeze. Excuse me, he growled. East's heart sank. Hm? He hummed, looking up at him cluelessly in a desperate attempt to play dumb. So he glared at him, his yellow eyes blazing with hatred, along with something else that he couldn't pick out. I don't feel sorry for myself, he snapped as if this were an argument. I- I'm fine. Better than ever now that the war is over, he continued, his voice strained. The war ended years ago, East thought, but he didn't say it out loud. He's dead and I wouldn't have it any other way. He knew which he, the larger country, was talking about, just the thought of his father made him flinch. I don't feel sorry for myself, Soviet finished, his voice faltering a little bit in the middle of the sentence. East looked up at him, surprised to have seen the crack in his armor, but Soviet looked away from him and reassumed his usual emotionless, intimidating demeanor. Uh, perspective switch. Yay! West Germany nervously led America, Britain, and France to the border between East and West Berlin. America let out a long breath that ended in a whistle when he saw the wall. Jesus, what does he think he's doing? We never should have let him have East Germany, France fretted, her pink eyes reflecting her concern. We didn't have a choice, Britain pointed out. West drowned out the conversation as he walked closer to the wall, brushing the bricks with his hand. He should have seen it coming after the inner German border. He should have done something. It's disgusting, America spat, bringing West's attention back to the other countries that were with him. Separating the two of them like that. I'm worried for East, France murmured, looking helplessly at the wall. West started feeling nauseous as he thought about what the Soviet Union might do to his brother. He knew the larger country hated both of them. Part of Wes understood that, but it was unfair nonetheless. They weren't like their father, so he shouldn't get to take his anger out on them just because of what happened all those years ago. Despicable, America continued to mutter. It's fucking cruel. West had the feeling that America was kind of subconsciously using this as an excuse to insult his rival, which he supposed was fair. 
it wasn't like he was saying anything that wasn't true. He looked back up at the wall and sighed, a pang of longing making him feel hollow on the inside. He hoped East was okay, but that seems like a far-fetched hope. Well, that was tragic, but anyways, yeah, the point is that the Soviet Union is a jerk. Also, if it seems like I'm applying the big gay between the Soviet Union and the German jackass, please know that I'm trying incredibly hard not to have it seem like that. You do not need to be in a romantic relationship with someone to be upset when they backstab you. That might be surprising. But it's true. Uh, but we'll get into that in his video! Uh, East Germany and Poland get especially close during this time. Hungary is also pretty close to both the- My dog is barking, I'm going to kill somebody. Oh frick, my parents just got home, I can't speak as loud. Well, I'm gonna keep doing this video whether you like it or not, because screw you. Um, where was I? Oh yeah, Hungary is also pretty close to both of them since, well, East is his nephew and Poland is also a good friend. East has this problem with, like, misplaced guilt, and it's not really helped by Soviet constantly bullying him. <laughs> also, I like to think that after the Berlin Wall was constructed, East and West would, like, throw paper airplanes with letters written on the inside of them to communicate. I don't know. I just like the idea. It's wholesome. Uh, so yeah, everything sucks for, like, 30 years. And then the Soviet Union actually gains a tiny bit of empathy. Bonding time, yay! Oh, and guess where we'll talk about it? His video. <laughs> Take a shot every time I say something about the Soviet Union's video and I can guarantee you will end up in a hospital. Don't do that, actually. I don't want to get sued. Finally, the wall goes down and East and West Germany are together again takes them a few months to officially reunite and they kind of like turn into one being they fuse their atoms together or something i don't fucking know i'm good at science